Turn it off. I rested my arms behind my head. Skim reading the credits of a movie I just watched. After seeing them through about halfway, I lifted myself from the sofa and walked to the kitchen. Stretching my arms out above me, I opened the fridge door and found a full carton of juice. So I sat down on the kitchen counter by the window, cracked open the lid, and took several long, noisy gulps. When I couldn't drink anymore, I gasped to let in new air and wiped my mouth on the back of my mind, of my hand. My evenings were uneventful around this time in summer. It was 9.15 p.m. on a Saturday in July. School was out for the holidays and my parents had gone to visit my aunt and uncle who lived by the coast. They would be they would still be gone for two more weeks. I declined an invitation to join them. I didn't dislike the place or my relatives, but we usually stayed there so long that I'd miss most of my summer break. And I think and I truthfully rather spend it uh, truthfully rather spend it with my friends in town. I was a good kid who knew how to wash clothes and use an oven, and generally not an idiot. So they let me stay at the house so long as I kept it clean. As I sat as I sat, I looked up into the garden to check for anything scary in the dark. It was empty and black. I kind of wish we had a pet, a dog, or a cat. Would be nice about now. But their hair always made me sneeze and my eyes go red and itchy. With that in my mind, my dad said no, even though I wouldn't mind it. 9.22 p.m. I put the rest of the juice carton back in the fridge door and went back over to the window. Forcing myself onto the counter again, I glanced out to the garden and identified the shadows one by one to make sure everything was in its place. The bushes were their usual shape. Two small, street, small trees stood together by the back fence and a middle table with four chairs sat casually on the patio. I like to check these things, which I looked, which is largely why I wasn't scared of the dark. I would always get up to investigate small noises in the night, and I hated sleeping with my face to the wall. If someone was in my room at night, I'd rather know about it, so at least there was the faintest chance of getting away somehow. This meant that my worries were quickly put to rest, as I either found nothing downstairs, with the radiator piping with the heat, or oh, or open my eyes to see an empty bedroom, not knowing what could be making the odd noises coming from the kitchen, or on the stairs, or in my room, is what makes my skin creep. 9.30 p.m. I got from the counter and wandered back into the living room to turn off the TV, I decided to take the rest of the juice upstairs. I went back into the kitchen, opened the French fridge door, and stopped. Turning my head to focus outside, I could see someone was standing in the garden. I shut the fridge door and turned off the light so they couldn't see me so easily. I moved slowly to lean on the kitchen counter to get a better look. All the doors were locked and all the neighbors were home. I took a moment to remind myself this. Still, my heart quickened a bit as I stood there straining to see his or her shape in the darkness at the end of the garden. I had to keep glancing away to keep their fuzzy outline clear in my vision. They were standing very still and were a little thin, but that's all I could see. I couldn't tell anything else. Oh, I said aloud. It was the garden umbrella leaning up against the back fence. I forgot that we used it for barbecues. I smiled at myself, pleased that I didn't go to get too worked up 
and went upstairs to my bedroom. I laid on my pillow and propped my head, my head up on the pillow. Opened my laptop on my stomach to see if anybody was online. Apparently someone else was bored and saw my name pop up. Chris, hey. Hey, you okay? Yeah, bored. Are your parents still away? For a couple more weeks. Why don't I come around? I don't want to be rude, but I kind of can't be bothered to hang out tonight, lol. Thanks, though. I know what you mean. It's cool. What about tomorrow? Yeah, that sounds better. Cool, I'll be, I'll be around about one. I got some family stuff to do in the morning. Okay. Do you still have a tent, by the way? We can camp in the garden or something. Ah, oh, stunner party. I love you too, bro. Whatever, lol. You got ten, right? Yeah, somewhere, somewhere. Let me check. BRB. I got up from my bed and headed to check the cupboard under the stairs. I didn't know where the tent was, but it seemed a good place to start. I opened the cupboard door and started shifting coats aside. Some cardboard boxes were stacked up at the back and might be hiding it. So I started unstacking them. I took out a couple of, of the easy to reach ones and had a stroke of good luck. As a tent bag came into view, I leaned over the other boxes and picked up the bag. I took the big garden umbrella that sat beside it too. Just in case it rained tomorrow, I paused, I put the tent down. It took me a couple of seconds to get back to the kitchen window and focus on the darkness outside. My eyes weren't yet adjusted to the dark, so I couldn't see all the way to the back fence. Turning off the kitchen light, I leaned on the counter and continued staring at the same point. The other garden features began to fade into view one by one. Fitting my previous mental image, I wasn't sure. What I wanted to see, the darkness gave way to the familiar forms I knew, but after a while, I was certain there st still stood a figure against the back garden fence. It hadn't moved. It stood there for 15 minutes looking at it. I couldn't tell the shape properly, but it did look like someone standing there. I decided it wasn't a threat. I thought if I was in any real danger, I would have been a lot more worried by now. That thought kept me calm, but I also wanted to find out what it was. I couldn't stand there forever. I jogged upstairs, picked up my laptop, and brought it down with two with me to the counter. Uh, could you come around now? Oh? Yeah, I think I see something in my garden. What is it? An animal? No, it's tall. Thought it was an umbrella. And now you're sure it isn't? I don't know. I thought it was someone. But now I'm sure it's not a person. It just looks weird, and I don't think it was there before. For when? I don't know. Earlier today, maybe? I can't remember. Are you scared? I'd feel better if someone else was was here. Well, I did offer to come around, and I am bored. So yeah. Yeah, I'll come soon. Cool, thanks. Use the front gate. I sat there watching a black shape lean against the fence for another ten minutes. Eventually the doorbell rang. I opened it, and Chris ran in, and Bear hugged me. It's been too long, Chris Mock cried. Yeah, it must have been a whole day, I retorted, smiling. The torment! He smiled, pretending to ignore me. Look, come over here, I said, pushing him off the washing kitchen. I switched off the light and pointed to the figure direct figure's direction. Look, look, give me a sex, said Chris. I can't see it properly. A minute later, he noticed... That black thing? Yeah. Um, I was still there looking at it for a while. I've expected it to be gone when he looked. He leaned off the counter. It's just a big plant or a plank of wood or something. Let's go watch TV. You check with me to make sure I ask? Do you have a torch? He returned. No, I admitted. Well, we could check if we keep the kitchen light on. And open a back door a little, he offered. I thought for a second and agreed. He said, but said we should stay right by the house. 
We slipped on our trainers and opened the back door. Stepping onto the patio, I felt the air was heavy and warm that night. Chris walked behind me. We stood very close to the door. Peering at the back fence. Should we? I just started to speak when he quickly stepped into the house again, still looking at the fence. What? I asked following him in. I turned and realized the figure was gone. It was obvious from the light coming from the back door that the fence in the rest of the garden was just as it always was. Where is it? Chris said. If it was leaning against the fence, it probably fell over into the bush or something. I tried to convince us both. We stared out for a few seconds longer, decided that we were too nervous to go and check. I don't usually go give in to my night terrors, but now they were just beginning to click into my head. Can you stay over for tonight? I asked Chris. Um, yeah, sure. It didn't sound like he really wanted to. He kept his eyes on the fence. We both went inside and locked the door before going up to my room. I got out a sleeping bag for Chris, and he drew in the curtains without looking outside into the garden again. We talked about stupid stuff for a couple hours to take our minds off the garden and fell asleep. In the morning, I found Chris's sleeping bag empty. I called out to Chris, and he said he was downstairs. So I threw on a t-shirt and went down. Sleep well? I asked. Yeah, pretty well, but I kept thinking about the garden and stuff. Hey, did you find that tent? He returned. Er, yeah. I answered, remembering that shape, which I had forgotten about until now. Well, I was thinking about camp the camping thing, and thought maybe we could bring the tent to my house. It would just make a, a change, you know? I didn't have to ask him why. I wasn't too keen on staying in my garden after last night. Wait, last night. Come to think of it. If someone was out and wanted to check the garden while I was, while I was in pitch black. I asked Chris and he hesitantly agreed. We put on our trainers and stepped out into the garden. We didn't know what, what we were so worried about. It was bright and colorful. The plants and bushes and bushes are around the edges of the garden. Smelled good, and there was a bird in one of the small trees, singing out for its mate somewhere. We walked to the back fence to find nothing out of place, and looked over the bushes in front of the panelings to check if anything lay behind them. We found nothing. I walked around the edge of the whole garden once more, while Chris tried whistling to the bird. He cocked his head from side to side, trying to figure him out. It was a warm day, perfect for camping that evening. I decided. We talked as we filled a couple of rucksacks with sleeping bags and some food from the kitchen. We didn't want to set up a fire, so we packed some tinned hot dogs, bread, a packet of hot, a uh, packet of tomatoes, and chocolate, as well as some bottles of water. There's a forest just next to my house, which is actually pretty good. Chris explained. Our garden backs onto the edge of it. I stayed in a tent there once with my dad. It was for my first little camping trip when I was like seven. I remember it was so exciting at the time. I thought we were really roughing it like some hardcore mountaineers. Chris laughed at himself. If we get too cold or need more food, we can just go to my house. My parents are out so we have free run of the place. Yours are away too? I questioned. It's their anniversary, set her out for tonight. He explained. They're staying in a hotel for the next town over. They'll be back in the morning. Apparently, leaving your kids behind was was in fashion this summer. At about noon, we left my house with a two rucksacks, a sleeping bag for each of us, and a tent, and made our way to Chris's house. It was fairly close by and a part of the same pleasant neighborhood. We talked and joked a lot, walking side by side, nodding and greeting a couple of familiar neighbors as we went. It was a crazy nice day. The sun was almost too much. It was hot on our necks, and the trees by the sidewalk seemed to glow green from underneath as the sunlight passed through the leaves. A sprinkler offered us some water as we walked by 
one house, and it felt good on my hot arms. I was already sweating by the time we got to Chris's place. We hadn't been walking for more than 20 minutes. We didn't go inside his house immediately because it was so hot. We went straight to his garden and dumped our bags in the shade. He wasn't joking. The gate of his garden backed straight onto an impressive forest. Very tall, thin trees stood high above the house and continued as far as I could see. Some bush bushes and shrubs littered the forest floor, but most of it was either grass or fairly smooth sections of dirt. I didn't see how this forest was classified as small. Looking good, right? He boasted. It's awesome. I admitted, opening the gate and surveying the area. I walked out in between the trees and found a flat spot for the tent. I turned around to ask Chris's opinion and paused a little disappointed. It didn't look like real, real camping when his house was so obviously in our faces. Let's go a little further in it. In so it at least feels legit. I said and walked Back to pick up my bags, Chris objected to carrying his heavy shit any further. We walked in a straight line from Chris's house. He kept, kept checking behind us until the house was just about obscured by trees in front of each other. We had only gone a short way, but in the forest was already thicker and greener. There was even a long rope swing hanging from one of the trees, but it was too old to hold our weight. So he decided to keep our spines unbroken and give it a miss. I unpacked the tent and set it up with Chris's help, and we threw our sleeping bags inside. I laid down inside to, to test it out. It was so warm and humid, I had to, to adjust my breathing for a second. I stepped out again and asked Chris if he had to a torch for the evening. I can do better than that, was his response, and he took off towards the house. It was too hot to run after him. So I opened my rucksack and cracked open a bottle of water, downing half of it and putting the rest back in the pack. I laid down on a patch of grass and looked up at the canopy. The leaves were shifting gently and the breeze I could feel from down the gear. I watched them sway and mesh together until I heard Chris return. Did you get a torch? I asked, closing my eyes. The sun shone through my eyelids and colored my vision red. I listened to the soft sound of his footsteps in the grass and walked past me towards the rope swing. That's not going to hold you, I warned as I heard him tug the branch with a small creak. He tugged it and, cr and it creaked in response. I listened. He tugged it once more and again there was a moment of silence. I guess he was still waiting, weighing it up. And then another tug. He continued to tug a few more times and a creaking followed each one. I was sure I wouldn't hold his weight, and I smiled, predicting one big creak and a snap of the rope. Rope or branch broke. I waited for some final tugs were made. Creak, creak. I waited still. Creak, creak, creak. Yo! I heard Chris's voice coming from his garden. I sat bolt upright, almost spraining my neck as I snapped my head sideways and faced his house. He was jogging through the trees, holding an electric lantern. lantern. I switched my gaze in the other direction towards the first swing. It was hanging still, nothing nearby. I stood up and turned full circle, nothing in any other direction. What? I mouthed myself, walking towards the rope. I tugged it gently, it didn't creak. I pulled it harder, it didn't creak. My mouth went dry. I jumped up and grabbed hold and yanked it down. Branch bent. A little as my feet touched the floor, it still didn't make a sound. I kept hold of it as, it, as I stared up towards the branches. But eventually the rope gave way under my weight somewhere in the middle. A soft thud fell on my ears as a thick rope fell in front of me. Chris was rattling the lantern as he came by. I never used this before. I got it for Christmas for my cousin. She buys some weird presents. Ah! I see the swing is dead. Let's have a proper burial in the memory of all the joy it gave us. I didn't respond. I continued looking up at the branch with, with half a rope swing tied to it. 
Hey, are you good? Chris followed my gaze. I thought you already come back. I said immediately. I wasn't the type to let things slide with an, oh, it's nothing. What? He replied. Someone walked by me and was messing around with the rope swing. Who was it? I don't know. Are they still still around? I don't know. My eyes closed and I'm... I don't know. I, I had my eyes closed and was laying just there. I pointed, but then I heard you shout, so I looked around. There was nothing here. I heard them walk by, by my head. I'm a little bit sick. Look, calm down for a second. Chris began. It's been over the day. We're 30 feet from my house. And even if it was a person, so what? It's just some public woods. Anyone can come through here. It made some sense. And he was right about it being public. But then where were they? They got us around one more time. However, the trees quickly layered up. And I couldn't see far at all. I guess it was possible for me to lose track of someone here in a short dis distance. Okay, I said. Man, I can stay alone in a house for weeks on end, but I can't handle a short walk through the woods on a summer's day. That's why you fought some muscle. The car Chris wheeling and laying above his head, and I laughed. We spent the day walking around the forest and returned to the tent to get some water. When we were too hot, we talked about school and what other plans were for the future. We talked about dreams we had and ghosts and creatures that lurked in the dark. Neither of us were too scared of things like that. But they made for good camping stories. Chris told a particularly good one of a woman who lived in the woods. She had the head of a cat. Maybe you heard a rasping meow. That meant she was trying to find you. If she stopped meowing, it signified you were found. And she was quickly making her way towards you. It made my skin crawl a little. And we stopped telling so stories soon after that. The light of day eventually faded. And it was getting hard to see. So we headed back to the tent for the night. The impressive heat during the day had killed our appetites, so we left the food for now and decided we'd eat it in the night if we got hungry. Chris hung an electric lantern at the front of the tent, flicking it on as he did so. It was surprisingly bright and spilled a yellow light onto the ground and onto the trees that faced us. The warm glow looked dramatic, but whatever was beyond the light was hidden in blackness. Our immediate air area was clear, but after a few paces, the light seemed to stop dead. It looked weird. Chris ducked, ducked under the tent opening, and I followed him. The sleeping bags looked inviting as the heat from earlier had gone, and it was too cold for the shirt, shirts and shorts. We got inside and took the lantern with us. Can you hear him meowing? I said, my head tilted as I strained to hear. Yeah, yeah, I can hear some bullshit too. Chris smiled and zipped up his sleeping bag. Damn, I thought I had him. Oh well. I zipped up my own bag and we lay there talking for a little while. And then the exhaustion of such a hot summer hit us and we fell asleep. I had a dream that we were walking to Chris's house again, but there were more trees than before, and it was getting dark very quickly. I blinked and suddenly it was night. With the forest sprawling in every direction, the rope sling hung in front of me. I turned around and Chris was gone. I heard a creak behind me. A feeling came over me like I had missed a step on the stairs. For some reason, I couldn't turn around. I started walking straight ahead. And rope swing soon came into my view again. I was aware I was in a nightmare. The rope swing slowly lifted itself up into the trees. I watched it disappear. I walked over and stood beneath it where it had been. And there was a rustle above me. I left my eyes to the canopy. A black figure with its head of a cat came hurriedly toward hurling downwards with its mouth open perfectly wide. One of its teeth touched my left eye. 
I tore myself away, gasping as I sat up in my in a tent. My back was damp with sweat, and Chris was asleep next to me. The lantern was still on, and I could see our backpacks at the end of the tent. I took a moment to breathe, and then let myself lay back down, my head thumping on the floor a little too hard. I once then reached for the bottom water to my side, downing a few mouthfuls. I couldn't fall asleep with a glow of the lantern on my eyelids, so I sat up searched the tent for it and quickly realized the light was coming from outside. Chris, I said, still confused from my from sleep. He went with something to reply. Chris, where's the lantern? Uh, somewhere. He said slowly and sleepily before turning over. Looking around again, the light was obviously coming from outside. I weighed up the options. Either some murderer had snuck into our tent and done nothing but take the lantern outside. Or we didn't actually bring it into the tent, and I had to remember wrongly. That sounded more convincing. So I knelt by the tent door and unzipped it. From the opening, I looked around. It was immediately obvious where a glow was coming from. Why couldn't I see it? I looked up. The lantern was resting 20 feet in the air, hanging in the dark. Goosebumps swept across my skin, and I zipped up the door before shaking Chris. Chris, please wake up. We heard the urgency in my voice and sat up. What? What's wrong? Chris said, rubbing his eyes. The lantern is hanging outside. But I brought it in, he assured me. I felt sick as my reasoning broke. We both looked at the front of the tent. We should go back to the house, I said. My resolve buckling. I was just a kid in a forest whose parents were away. Were away. I'm not walking through the dark, he replied. Chris was now looking worried. We've got a lantern. I stopped myself. We looked at the front of the tent again. We couldn't sit there forever. We were getting scared as we sat there doing nothing. So this was the plan. We weren't going back to sleep. We would get the lantern back somehow. Leave everything here and spend the night in Chris's house. I hated being the one to go first. I wanted to turn back. Even just crouching by the tent entrance. Unzipping the fabric door. I looked around. Nothing. I peered over the tent behind us, nothing in sight. Literally nothing. Everything was everything was black outside of the of the light. I took a step out and it was cold. Chris said the same thing. I said the same. As he stood right by my side, looking over his shoulder, he turned back and saw the lantern in the air. Oh my god. We stood there looking at it for a few seconds that seemed we crawled by. Eventually, I worked out which tree was hanging from. The broken rope swing at my feet confirmed it. Way up, way up out of reach, the lantern hung above our heads, tied to the other end of the rope. It still dangled from the darkness. I couldn't work it out. It was high up. Too high up for even a ladder. The trees were thin, and the bear... Besides, the leaves made up the canopy. There was nowhere to climb. Picking up the length of the rope that had snapped off earlier, I bundled it up and tied a knot and aimed it at the lantern. I took a step back and jumped, tossing it into the air. It caught the lantern on its side and sent it swinging. It, th it threw shadows rocking around us. Suddenly, I suddenly wish it I hadn't hit it. The light made the shadows lean from side to side with the lantern. The horrible, unnatural swaying made me panic and my eyes became wet as fear took solid hold of me. I picked up the rope again and lobbed it desperately at the lantern. I missed and the bundle of ropes sailed off into the darkness. Helplessly, I turned to Chris, who had already grabbed his backpack. He spanned around and threw it with a yelp, and it hit the lantern dead on, and it, f it fell and thudded to the floor with a crack. But the light was still on. I ran to pick it up. I turned to Chris and almost cried with relief. Okay, go, 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 go. Let's go. I heard Jenny started jogging quickly towards the house. His house. As I followed. We half ran, half stumbled off into the dark. Checking over our shoulders. And working ourselves up as our thoughts were consumed by everything. 
It may be waiting in the trees for us. I don't know how long we were moving, but it soon became apparent that Chris's house wasn't in this step direction. For God's sake, where is it? Chris said, tension taking hold of his voice. We have to find the tent and try it again. A couple of te tears were forming at the corner of, uh, of his eyes. They were probably on mine too. My heart was thumping so hard it didn't, I didn't notice. Okay. Took a breath and we turned around heading in a straight line directly behind us. What if we didn't find a tent? I couldn't have stopped myself thinking that over and over as we retraced our steps. We walked for what seemed like twice as long before the light finally fell on the side of the tent. We ran up and stood close to its side, looking around trying to figure out which direction we should go. Silence was like build up of a nightmare. Right before some horrible thing lurches out at you, screaming. The comparison, comparison made me gag and I scrunched my eyes shut. The hair on my skin lifting. My temples were so hot it felt like my brain was studying against the inside of my skull. I be couldn't begin to guess where the house was. We couldn't see about 10 feet from the lantern. And then, pitch black, there was no clues. Every direction would look wrong. Chris took the from me and walked in a small circle, straining his eyes to try to see. I say put. Chris, turn it off. I whispered to him hurriedly. What? He asked. I stepped quickly and quietly towards him, bringing my face to him. There's something in the tent. His gaze shifted past towards me. He stood there staring. We were standing on the left-hand side of the tent. And from this angle, I could just about see... See the unzipped door hanging open, but I remember leaving it that way. So that wasn't what was making me clench my teeth together. A few feet away, my rucksack sat outside on the dry earth, with food I had packed now neatly arranged, trailing from it. Our sleeping bags were also nicely laid out end to end, making the line of belongings laid straight into the mouth of the tent. I took a careful step toward forward so the light could pass. More easily through the fabric. It could have couldn't have been a trick of the light. Something big and dark obviously crouched it crouched with what I guessed was in its front facing the open door. I hated myself for not seeing it sooner. It didn't move at all or seem to breathe. It just sat, waiting for us to investigate the display it had made. Turn it off, I whispered again. Chris continued staring deaf to me. Chris! I pleaded in a whisper. His voice from a voice from nearby joined in. Chris! We both heard it, and, our, and the blood fell in our veins. It came from the tent. A slow, strained rasp of a voice. It sounded like a parrot copying in a new word. The sound clicked across my skin and crept into my ears. The light flicked off with a click that was too loud. Chris grabbed my shoulder and I clenched my fists closed. Painfully tight, we stood there in complete darkness. I didn't want to move. And I didn't want to stay. My brain fought for control as my legs waited for a decision. Rooted in place, we brew shadow, quiet breaths. Blackness press pressing on our eyes like water. Sweat ran down my neck. I couldn't see the tent. Chris. Something said, turn it off. My stomach flipped inside out as the thing in the tent played with my words. I quickly grabbed Chris's hand, yanking him in the opposite direction. I ran like I never had before. Chris's legs thudding alternately with mine. The sprint continued for about a minute. We lost ourselves as we ran through the absolute darkness. I forgot we were where we were, and I couldn't see what was in front of my face. I ran ahead and on into a tree. My horse struck its side with a sickening hollow knock. Sparks slid up inside my eyes as I choked back the pain. It hurt so much I couldn't breathe. Chris tried to pull me on, but I buckled on to the floor on my knees and threw up. As I clasped onto my back, my head went numb. Chris lifted me up. Please don't stop. Please, please. He begged. I couldn't reply. 
Please, please keep going. I forced my legs to take my weights and locked my knees upright. Leaning on Chris, my body felt empty. And a little blood rolled down my forehead and into my brow. I wiped it away as I tried to grasp the situation again. But the pain was too much. Wait, I can't. I begged. Just wait, just wait. We stood together in inky woods, but we could have been anywhere. I couldn't see Chris as he huddled next to me. It didn't feel like darkness. It felt like someone had wrapped my head in a blanket. Neither of us said a word as we waited, but our breathing was loud, and I wondered for what distance it could be heard. Reality began to return to me, and the pain was now just, just about bearable. I straightened up, grasping at what was happening. The pins of fear sank into me a second time. I started counting my head. One minute passed without any sound in the world. The wind was dead. And the birds might be too. Another minute went by. I continued counting. In three minutes, we were still alone. Was it even looking for us? I reached for Chris's arm in the dark. He jumped when I touched, when I touched it. But I steadied him with the other, and he was still holding lantern. Good. We had light on our side. Now if only we could use it. I went over it, over the events hurriedly in my mind. Lantern was hanging from a tree. We got out of the tent, then couldn't find our way home. By the time we returned to the tent, something was in it. But then why did it take the lantern to do nothing while we slept? If it was sheer luck that we were alone when we were trying to get the lantern, I wonder what how small the possibility was us was of us getting a second chance. I stayed silent for a moment and then whispered as best as I could. Chris, we need to turn on the lantern. We need to get the f need to fucking get away from here. We can make a run for your house, but we need to see. Now, please, we have to stay here. Chris tried to whisper too. We can't we can wait for morning if we have to. We can't turn it on. I could hear in his voice that as I was breaking through. Just just keep quiet. You fucking have to, please. I parted my lips to try again, but as I did I heard something. A very faint clicking sound from somewhere in the dark. It was almost inaudible. But it was there, an irregularly stuttering, stuttering, clicking sound. It sat, it sounded fingernails on a wooden table, and it was moving. It came from in front of us. I was sure of it. A steady click, clack, click. Filling my ears as we, as we tried to gauge the distance. It was drawing closer. Click, 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 clack. It stopped. I was glad for the first time in my life, and I couldn't see what was waiting in the dark. Perhaps that meant we were also hidden, as my thoughts fired off in every direction. I gave the thing in the darkness an image of a cat-headed woman, and it terrified me. I was waiting for to hear that meow, but my ears were met with something else. Chris! I tested my throat and tried not to cry. Chris! It said his name twice. I cupped my head, hand over my mouth. The horrible scraping dialogue sounded a few steps away. The words were, s were said oddly, with no meaning behind them. They were just sounds that this thing had picked up, and was now using them to catch us out in the dark. Chris let go of my hand, and I heard his foot plant softly on the grass behind him as he prepared to run. Don't you dare! I said it to project into his mind. Don't you, don't you make a sound! Chris, please. Sam is so wrong. Drawn out like a door slowly opening. Chris slid out a whisk limper as it called him. I froze and waited for something, anything to happen. There was a long silence and I held my breath for as long as I could. I couldn't wait anymore. Very slowly, I reached out to Chris and put my hand on his shoulder. Very carefully, we both lifted our feet and managed to step without making a sound. We backstepped away from the voice, and it didn't stop moving. But ever so carefully, so, so slowly, I didn't care how long it would take us to get somewhere. If it took us an hour, every step, we were going to get out. Chris backed into a tree and gasped audibly. The clicking start started up immediately. Click, click, clack, click. It rolled on consistently 
moving towards us. I didn't know what to do. All I could think of was to screw my eyes shut and try not to scream. As we stood there, the clicking came to a stop, an arm's length away from where we stood. Silence. Chris, turn it on. Please. Fear took over. Chris searched, switched on the light, and it tore off in the other direction without looking behind him. I wheeled in place and held that lantern in my sight like nothing else existed. It did. We didn't dare look at the thing, but we could hear it. Our footsteps thudded at the grass, and the thing pursued us with a tap, 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 tap. Now, like scurrying little claws on hard earth. As I ran desperately to pitch up to the light, the sound suddenly rose up behind me. Over our heads, in between the trees, this wasn't happening. It was going to drop down on us. Turn! I screamed. I didn't care anymore. If we were going to get out with our lives, we were going to have to run for them. We suddenly changed course. The tapping stopped for a moment, long enough for us to gain a few feet before it came in our direction again. My legs were cramped horribly, and Chris was gasping hard. We couldn't keep this up. Where were we? I saw the light from the lantern come to an abrupt halt up ahead. I didn't have time to stop and brace myself to, th to thump into Chris, but the light passed be beneath my feet. He had dropped the lantern. I turned my head and watched it recede into the darkness. It was immediately too far for me to go back. The thing would be on me in a second. Chris! I was I was crying and swiping from tears from my cheeks as I ran, preparing for my face to connect with a tree at any moment. Keep going! I heard Chris from up ahead. There's a light! My vision was blurry from, e from tears, but could see it, an orange glow hanging in the air in the distance. Another one? What was happening? I wanted to scream to at him to avoid it, but I realized it was a street light. My legs felt like I was running through water, but I pushed them harder with the goal in sight. Gradually and painfully, the light drew closer, as did the clicking. The thing could move like nothing I knew. I saw Chris's figure pass underneath the street light, and then he was gone again. Don't stop! I yelled as I pressed, approached the edge of the forest, and my legs adjusted as the forest floor gave way to a solid footing. I could see a row of more street lights heading off, off to the right, and Chris's figure was passing regularly underneath each. When I was sure I was completely out of the trees, I didn't stop. I ran under several more street lights, putting as much distance as I could manage between us. In the edge of the woods, I realized after a while that the clicking had stopped. I needed to see we were okay. I turned my head and looked back in the row of lights, keeping my gaze on the first light. My pace slowed as the pain in my head and legs came back. There was silence once more, and the lights revealed an empty pathway. I jogged on and kept my eyes on the glow, expecting to see something at any minute. But it but it lit up nothing but concrete in the edge of the road. Is it there? The question pulsed in my mind over and over. As I turned ahead and continued catching up to Chris, I caught sight of something pass under the first street light. An almighty shock went through me as fears were confirmed. I let out a cry and picked up the pace once more, sprinting between the lights. The image was burned into my mind. I hardly caught the glimpse of the thing, but it was white and massive. And almost brushed the street light as it went under it. It had a long, upright body full of kinks, like it had unfolded itself. That's all I was able to tell. It must have had a face and limbs, but I didn't have time to see. I didn't look again. The path gave way to more lights, and soon I could see the glow of windows in some houses either side of the road. I recognized where we were, close to my house by some miracle, a little further and we would be there. My house, I yelled, and Chris listened, turning left on a side side street and dashing down with a panic on my side. I reached the turning and looked down the road and see Chris jumping the fence into my garden. Hurry up! 
I heard him scream. Reaching the fence, I planted my hands on top, hoist myself over, and shredded my elbows on the process. My ankles stung as I thudded into the garden and sprinted towards the kitchen door. Chris stepped inside, gasping for air as I fumbled a key into the lock and rushed it sideways. We both flew into the kitchen and slammed the door behind us. I locked it from the inside, and we both sprinted upstairs into the bathroom, locking it behind us. What was that? I managed to say in a panicked whisper, wondering if it would get in. Did you see it? No. Chris crouched under the window, letting tears roll. Shit, it was so tall, it, it, it was, I couldn't, don't tell me. Chris cut me off, I molded over, again, and again, as I sat there, minutes slowly ticked into hours, by into hours. My head was fizzing all the while, and I could still hear its voice, that disgusting voice. My elbows and forearms were st sticky with blood, and we both looked at the floor. The occasional sob coming from the two of us. Our hearts banged in our chest, and we spent the night that way. Light streamed in from the window, but we didn't unlock the bathroom door until noon. We crept downstairs, the kitchen door still locked, and nothing was in the house. I looked out the living room window, another perfect day. No people walked by, but the sprinklers were on, and I could hear the birds again. It helped calm help to calm our nerves. That tank can stay there, I said at last. Yeah, Chris agreed. We stayed off in the living room, with the TV off that all day. We didn't know what to do. We talked about if we should call the police or something. The day crawled by as we tried to rake our thoughts together and think about, think of what to do next. But all that went through our, my mind was what had just happened. Not what we should be doing, by the time it was dark, at about 9 p.m., the phone rang. It was Chris's parents asking if I'd, I'd seen him as they were getting worried. They had just got back from out of town. I let them know he, he was okay and asked if, he, if they could come pick us both up from my house because something had happened. They wanted to know what, but I said we wanted to tell them when they get here. They said they would be here soon. Relief washed over us as adults were on their way to make sh it, way to make everything was all right. They would believe us. They didn't lie about, about these things, even if they were skept skeptical. They would at least believe that some dangerous animal was in the forest, and that was good enough for us. I went to the kitchen for some juice from the fridge and realized I hadn't had a drink all day. I could hear water dripping in the sink, so I turned the faucet tighter and collected some juice. As I headed towards the living room, the water started started to tap again. I flipped the light on and realized it wasn't coming from the sink, or anywhere in the room for that matter. It sounded like it was coming from further away. I looked out in the garden, and I could see a fuzzy, tall silhouette leaning up against the back fence in the dark. Actually, the tapping sounded more like clicking figure slowly moving away from the fence and clicked across the grass towards the house. Please. 